Bible says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Of God, I want to, I want to read farther, but uh, brethren, my heart's desire is that Israel might be saved. That's what I'd like to see. What I want to see, what I hope to see, is that Israel will come to God. That they will pray. That she will turn her uh, turn from her wicked ways and come to the Lord. But I bear I bear them record. They do have a zeal of God, but it's it's not according to knowledge. They, uh, uh, they're, they're ignorant of God's righteousness. They're going about to establish their own righteousness. Have you ever seen anybody? I'm going to preach here in a little while, but have you ever seen anybody? I mean, that is the case. They're just, they, they've got a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. And they don't really understand the righteousness of God. And they don't really understand the truth of the gospel. And they, they don't really understand the holiness message and what it is. And so what they've done is in their ignorance and in their, un, uh, in their, uh, uh, in their uh, lack of knowledge, they have gone about to establish their own righteousness. I mean, on both ends of the spectrum, they've gone to establish their own righteousness. We've got folks that has left left our midst and gone into the charismatic ranks. You know why? They just have not, uh, they've not buckled down to the truth of the gospel. They're not, they're not really sold out on the truth of holiness. They're not really sold out on what it means to come out from among the world and, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And so they've gone about to establish their own righteousness. They have seared their conscience over with a hot iron and they, they, have, they have taken that step over the boundary they've taken that step across the line and now they have left our ranks and they have established their own righteousness we've got them on the other end of the spectrum too Hey man, I mean we've got them on both sides of the fence. We've got some that's went in each direction. But I tell you what, I thank God for holiness, don't you? I'm glad for the truth of the gospel. I'm glad that I know what's right. I'm glad that somebody got a hold of me. I'm glad that somebody preached me the truth. I'm glad somebody told me what was right. I'm I'm glad that somebody uh, preached until old time conviction fell, aren't you? I'm glad for the truth of the gospel. Hey Amen. Now, if we read on down in the ninth verse, and I'm going to tie this together. If we read down the ninth verse, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, I don't know how many of you women in here mostly women will know about the belt department stores you ever seen them they're like mcgalpins and pennies and lazarus and they've got the belt department stores now henderson belk uh he was the founder of uh, of the store and he told the story of his conversion in the book uh men twice born or twice born men rather he he had told his uh he had told the uh, story of his conversion about how a man had come and witnessed to him about the lord he said that fella had been in an army camp he had, he had been there and he had served uh, in that facility. He had served in that facet and they had, they had transferred him from one camp to the other. He said, when we got over into the next army base, I looked around and when I did, all the men and all the women, they had looked different. They had walked different. They had talked different. Their attitude and their life was, was something I was not accustomed to something I did not uh, had ever not come in contact with and said I looked over at my wife and I said honey so help me I believe everybody here is saved I believe they're Christians if we're gonna fit in we're gonna have to act the part we're gonna have to look the part we're gonna have to walk the part and he said we done a good job for a while we dress like Christians 
We talk like Christians. We look like Christians. We acted like Christians. He said we'd done it so well. He said we had, we had, got, we had got down the part so well that when the resident Sunday school teacher of that army camp had been transferred to another place, they was looking for a teacher, and they got me, and they, they chose me to teach the Sunday school class, and I was not saved, but they thought I was because I was doing a good job just being like everybody else. How many knows that it does not matter if you look the part if you're not the part? Amen. I mean, now we've got to live holiness. Don't misunderstand me. We must come out from among the world. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But oh, my friend, merely walking in the ways of holiness is not going to save us. We must be holiness. We must be saved. We must have come out from the world. That fellow said, I was there and I, I got the Sunday school teacher's job and one Sunday morning our lesson was on salvation. I stood up and I took the platform. He said, I began to, I, I was getting ready to teach to them and he said, I, I looked out over the congregation and asked, how many here this morning is not saved? Yeah. Eleven of them raised their hands. I realized then, he told, I realized then I was teaching a sermon that I was not qualified to teach. I was trying to lead folks to the Lord and I didn't know how to get there myself. I looked down at the chaplain and I said, Sir, would you like to come teach this morning? That chaplain stood to his feet and said, I'd love to. He got up and read from Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, and this is how he read. He started out and said, If thou shalt confess with thine mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine head that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the head man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He, he started to teach that Sunday school lesson, and a young man that was not saved raised his hand and said, Sir, you've made a mistake. The Bible don't say I've got to believe in my head. The Bible don't say my head's got to be changed. The Bible says I've got to believe in my heart and that my heart has to be changed. That chaplain stood back and said, I think I finally realized the problem in our churches. We've got a lot of folks that have head knowledge, but we don't got a lot of folks that's got heart knowledge. Amen. So I want to preach the next few minutes if God will help me on head knowledge or heart knowledge. Amen. I don't know about you, but hey, I was raised in the house of God. I appreciate that. I've got my father here with me. I'm 29 years old. I've, I've been a preacher's kid as long as I can remember. I was raised in church. I fell asleep under church pews. I, I was took to church when I didn't want to go to church. I didn't have a choice. My dad, when I, when I got 13 or 14, dad didn't say, do you want to go today? You know what he did? You get ready and go to church. And if I told him I wasn't going, that size 56 belt at the time was going to come unlooped from his pants and I was going to get beat to the house of God they'll tell you now that that would drive them away well they said that so long and they've not brought their kids to church so long that the only ones that's got their kids with them is ones that's made them come to the house of God Amen. I'll tell you what. I'm glad that my mother and father never gave me a choice. I'm glad they never asked me how I felt. I was drove to the house of God. I was beat to the house of God. I had the, I had the word of God pounded in my head. And one day, one day when that man of God stood up behind the platform and he began to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, conviction gripped my heart. And I ran down to an old-fashioned altar of prayer. And God said, saved me and God brought me out from a life of sin. I want to tell you some friend, it was not what I had in my head, but it's what I got in my heart. You understand me? It's not what others told me. It's not what others showed me. It's not what others had me believe, but it's what God had instilled in my heart. It's what I got deep down inside of me. And now that I'm saved, I don't have to fight over holiness. I don't got to fight over the truth. I've got it in my heart so much that I just want to please God. Hey Amen. You know who fights holiness? Folks that's got head knowledge. Hey Amen. If you got heart knowledge, you ain't going to fight the truth of the gospel. Hey, I mean, the ones with head knowledge is the ones that's getting mad 
when the pastor and the preacher comes by and he stands up and preaches that women has got to look like women and men has got to look like men ones with head knowledge is the ones that gets mad when the preacher tells the ladies you cannot cut your hair you cannot wear your jewelry you cannot you cannot uh, uh, you, you cannot get involved in this world it is the man and woman that gets mad when the preacher gets up and tells them we cannot get involved in the entertainment business we cannot go to places of this world but we have got to come out from among the world and be ye separate thus saith the Lord it is men and women that's got mere head knowledge that gets mad when the gospel's preached but those of us that has really got saved and it's sunk down in our heart we'll say Lord whatever you want that's alright with me you show me the truth God you show me the ways of holiness you show me the path of righteousness I want to walk in the ways of the Lord we have got to have men and women that have got heart knowledge. Yes. Amen. Preach. Amen. You know what head knowledge does? Head knowledge folds his arms and pouts for six months. Head knowledge stays at home. Head knowledge fights the pastor. Head knowledge locks his wallet. Head knowledge does not amen. Head knowledge will sit there and look at the preacher like he's crazy. But heart knowledge will raise their hand. Praise God. Heart knowledge will say, I'll do it, pastor. Heart knowledge will say, that's fine with me, preacher. Heart knowledge will say, that's all right, Lord. I believe I will. Heart knowledge will say, I'm going to come anyway. Heart knowledge will say, hey, I'm going to serve God no matter what it takes. I want heart knowledge, don't you? I don't need head knowledge. I need heart knowledge. I'm not against higher learning. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not against higher learning. We got, we've had folks from our church go to Bible college. I think it's one of the best things that there ever has been. Not against it at all. Brother Gary Smith's one of the best men you can find. He's president of Export Bible School now. I mean, a great man. Yeah. I just went and heard Brother Taylor preach. Outstanding preacher. I'm not, I'm not against Bible school. No, don't misunderstand me. But when our priority is head knowledge, when our priority, most men and women, most men and women, I mean, they can quote you the Word of God, but it's only to argue. Hey, man. I've seen some of them that knew it upside down and backwards, but they never had it sunk in their hearts. I had them that could quote me scriptures, but they didn't know what it meant. I had them that could tell me what thus saith the word of God, but they wasn't living what thus saith the word of God. You know why? They had it in their head, and they never had it in their heart. You know what a lot of our problem is? A lot of our problem is just a mere 18 inches. If we could transfer our head knowledge into our heart, we'd be in a whole lot better shape. Amen. Hey. Heart knowledge is what we need. Man, we got folks. We got folks, I mean, head knowledge dominates them. Head knowledge drives them. Head knowledge is what compels them. And so, since they're so strung out on head knowledge, when the preacher gets up and he reads from us the Word of God, hey, great God, I'm going to get in trouble here. When the preacher gets up and he preaches us from the Word of God, they got to go to the Greek. They got to go to the Hebrew. They got to go to every manuscript that's ever wrote. They got to read 49 commentaries. They got, I mean, you understand what I'm saying, don't you? Head knowledge is trying, but heart knowledge says that that's what the Word of God says. That's fine with me. Hey, man's opinion is not what counts. Man's opinion is not what's going to get us to heaven. What man's ideas that he has wrote down in another book is not going to matter. I'll tell you the book that's going to get us to heaven. It's the Word of God. And if the Lord says it, that's fine. I mean, that's, that's all we need. If the, if the Word of God says that we cannot entangle ourselves, we cannot get involved in the world. We must come out from the world. But head knowledge, head knowledge has walked in our holiness churches. Heart knowledge is left. Oh, preacher, that don't happen. Don't tell me it don't. 
Or my aunt got saved that was not raised in church, and she's not, she, don't, she don't come to our church no more, but she did for a while. My father, to tell you, is the truth. My mother's sister was not raised in church. She was not brought to the house of God. And when Pam come and got saved, Pam, Pam had rode in a biker gang. Her and her husband, they, they, they was in, into, into riding Harleys and going on down to all the conventions and everything they'd have. And, I mean, Pam, she'd done everything that the world done. Pam, she, she was as sold out as she could be to the world. When Pam come and got saved that night, I mean, the very first words out of her mouth was, what do I got to do now? Where can I go again? I don't want it to tell me. I mean, what, what, what's the Bible say I need to do? You know why? She never got a, She never got no head knowledge. She got it drove into her heart so much that there was a genuine love for God and that genuine love for God drove her to do what the word of God said we need heart knowledge amen we're not saved because I know I went to church my I sung in the choir when there was days I shouldn't have been on the platform because I knew I wasn't right with God. Come on here. Yeah. I shouted when I knew that it wasn't God. I prayed when I didn't feel the tug of God. I went through the motions. Yeah, I did. You know why? Our children know how to do they know what to do they know when to do they've got all the head knowledge I mean they they know when sister so and so begins to raise her hand and speak in tongues and that one comes out from the side pew and begins to shout up and down the aisle they know that highway of holiness is getting ready to explode and so we might as well stop uh, stop talking and chewing our gum and writing notes and passing it to our neighbor we might as well just stand and raise our hands that's what everybody else is fixing to do and we'll shout when the next one takes off hey you understand you know what it is it's it's head knowledge friend but when they come to the altar and our children really get an experience in God and their heart has been changed and their heart has been made new oh my I want to tell you something friend heart knowledge makes all the difference amen amen heart knowledge is what we need heart knowledge is what our holiness church hear me here We've had holiness preachers come by here and they've preached holiness to us. I've had holiness preachers come by our church and they preached holiness to me. We don't have the excuse that we ain't heard. Our only excuse is we can't get it from our head to our heart. Amen. We've got it in our head. We just ain't convinced in our heart. You know why some folks leave us? You know why some folks backslide from our ranks? You know why some of the great preachers that was at one time with us that has failed to sin? Why some of them preachers that could stand right in our midst and preach that felt like heaven was absolutely going to come down and slap us right in, right in the middle of the forehead? You know why some of them's gone? Because they never really, great God, I'm going to get in trouble here. But hey, my friend, we just need to transfer it from our head to our heart. Heart. Amen. We need a church and we need people that need to know why they believe what they believe. Amen. Our young folks don't even don't only need to stand up and say, I believe this because it's what we've been preached. We need our young folks and our older folks and our middle-aged folks and our young married folks, we need them to be able to stand up and say, this is what I believe because I've got it settled in my heart. This is what I believe because it's the truth. This is what I believe because I read it in the Word of God. This is what I believe because God has showed me. This is what I believe. Heart knowledge. Heart knowledge. Heart knowledge. My desire is that they might be saved. What I want is they might be saved. What I really, what I really would love to see is that Israel would come to God. She's got, she's got a zeal, but it ain't, it ain't according to us. I mean, she, she just don't understand, and so she's left our way, and she's left us, and she's gone about uh, to establish her own righteousness. What was your problem, Israel? You knew what to do. You had heard it before, but it had never really sunk to your heart. Amen. We'd lose a lot less folks if we could just get it to sink in their heart. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. One day, Brother Hubert, one day, it sunk in my heart. <laughs> Praise God. One day, I believed it for myself. One day, I knew it was true because that's what was right. One day, I went to that hole in this church and I really hit the rock. One day, I got everything in the right perspective. One day, I started looking at it right for the game. One day, I got heart knowledge. Praise God. One day, I believed it for myself. Amen. Amen. And the next time before you before you fight holiness the next time make sure make sure that you've not only got head knowledge but you've got some heart knowledge amen hey when one preacher can stand at a, at a, at a camp meeting in Illinois and tell me out of his own mouth after he had traveled our country and preached in your church and had preached in ours after I mean every one of you here would know him if I called his name but after that preacher would blow by our places and preach our meetings and preach our camps and preach our camp meetings after that preacher would come by and preach just about the ways of holiness preach just about coming out from the world preach just that we must we must be separated after that preacher had failed to sin and I talked to that preacher and said why don't you come back home why don't you turn around back to the ways of holiness that preacher could look me in the face and say preacher I never believed it for myself Myself. What do you mean you never believed it for myself? I was raised that way. I knew how to preach it. I knew what to say, but it was never really in my heart. Oh yeah, I could get the amens. I could get them on their feet and shout, but I was never convinced for myself. I want to ask you something here tonight, Highway of Holiness. I want to ask you, I mean, just hear me for a little while. I don't know who's going to get this tape, but hey, I want to ask you tonight in this, as you're listening here, friend, I want to ask you something. Have you really got it in your heart or are we here because we know this is where we are expected to be are we living right to please mom and dad are we living right because we just don't want brother Collins to stand up and come down our road where we're living or are we living right because we don't care what nobody else says the truth is still the truth Amen. Are we living holiness because others have persuaded us? Or are we living holiness because we have got it for ourselves? You're standing with me right now. We're getting ready to gather in here and we're getting ready to go into main service. I want to ask you something tonight, friend. Have we really got it in our heart? Is it really in our heart? Oh my. I want heart knowledge. I want heart knowledge. Gather in these altars tonight, friend. Let's come talk to God. Lord, I need more heart knowledge. Come on, let's talk to the Lord. You know, that's the, that's, that's the only way. I remember when I first started preaching, you know, and I heard Havis Crawford. He was stuttering. And it uh, seemed like all the young preachers wanted to stutter after Brother Crawford came on the scene real big. And uh, then... You know, I, I remember uh, John Carter, he used to, he'd preach and he'd wink a lot. Some of y'all remember that. All them young preachers run around, they'd all try to wink. It didn't work for them. It wasn't them. You know, you don't need to stutter because you ain't Hayes Crawford. You know, and, and I heard, I don't know how many I've heard try to be preaching right in the middle of preaching. Stop and start singing a song like L.D. Moore. But you ain't L.D. Moore. You know, just be who you are, you know. I found out a long time ago, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I gotta, I've got to just be who I am. Hey, there's only one brother, L.L. L. Collins, you know. And, I mean, he, uh, he can grab that guitar and walk in and start, start right in. He can start right out in the middle, you know. He don't have to have a beginning. He can just start. It seems like he'll start right in the middle, right in the middle of it. And uh, I can't do that. But uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad he can. I just have to be who I am. But if, I don't know if you got these old hymnals or not. It's uh, How Well Holiness Hymns, but let's try to sing a verse to this old song. It says, page 174, I am determined to hold out to the end. You inspired me with that song tonight. I looked back and I seen him and Brian said, Dad, you know who that is? 
I said, no. And uh, he seen me, and I said, boy, I ain't seen you in a long time. See him in church and end up singing like that? Thrilled my heart. And I opened up my uh, songbook, and I said, if they do ask me to sing, what would I sing? And it just fell on this old song, said, I am determined to hold out to the end. I got a determination. I'm going to make it. Used to preach a lot for Brother Grady McMurray. Is he still living? Brother McMurray still living? I, I didn't know. I didn't know if he was or not, but uh, there in uh, Tennessee, he used to sing this song. Uh, and he'd all, Brother Grady never did hardly look at the crowd. He always just looked up. But he'd sing this song, Look Up in the Sky, and Bless My Heart. If you would, it'll relax you a little bit. Stand up, and if you don't know it, clap your hands, hum, or something. Amen. Let's sing a verse to this. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Somewhere. I have no idea, really, sister. I just... Let me hear it. I can tell if it's too high or low. That's close enough. When I first found Jesus, something o'er me stole. Like lightning it went through me, and glory filled my soul. Salvation made me happy, took my fears away. And when I meet old Satan, to him I always say, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. Cause I know I have salvation, feel him in my soul. I am determined, hold out to the end. Satan was so angry, he said he'd soon be back. Just let the path get narrow, he will lose the track. But I'm so full of glory, my Lord, I owe is fine. I just say to Satan, oh man, get thee behind, cause I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend, and I know I have salvation, feel him in my soul. I am determined, hold out to the end. This old time religion makes me sometimes shout I don't have time to gossip, not any time to pout They say that I'm too noisy when the blessings flow I shout, oh hallelujah, I want the world to know That I am determined to hold out to the end Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. I know I have salvation, I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out. I hear the trumpet sounding, sounding in the sky. I'll see the mountains trembling, to heaven I will fly. For Jesus will be calling, there'll be no time to mend. With joy I'll go up singing, I've held out to the end. And I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. I know I have salvation, feel it in my soul. I am determined This old time religion It makes me sometimes shout I don't have time to gossip Not any time to pout They say that I'm too noisy But when those blessings flow I shout, oh hallelujah I want the world to know that I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, him I can depend. I know I have salvation. I am 
do term one more time. Say it like you mean it. Yes, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. Amen. Before you sit down and shake hands with somebody and say, I am determined. I'm going to hold out to the end. Thank God I got my mind made up. How about you? Praise God. I'll try to hurry here tonight. Amen. It is a privilege, like I said, to be with you. Thank God. Let's turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. I don't have to get afraid. I'm two chapters short of what scares some folks half to death. Chapter 9. I never will forget the church I'm pastoring right now. First Sunday morning I walked in. They said, do you want to teach the Bible class? I said, I sure do. They said, well, here's where we're at. I said, maybe you want to wait till next Sunday. I said, what's our lesson? They said, 1 Corinthians 11, 1. I said, no, I want it this Sunday. Give it to me right now. Yeah. Amen. Now, you know, if they got down around verse 16 or 17, 18, we'll start on the Lord's Supper. But anybody, anybody, you know, like teach on that, that first half, they don't care a lot for. But anyway, we're in chapter 9. May not like this either when I get done. I don't know. Amen. He said in verse 1, Am... I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. If I'm nobody else's, I, I'm yours, he said. And he said, For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Now that's my text tonight. I'm going to preach on my answer to them is this. But I'll read a couple more verses real quick. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and even, or it just says, and Cephas, or I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? I figured every preacher in here would holler hallelujah to that. Who goeth to warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man? And then there's a question mark. Or saith not the law the same also in another question mark? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? Then he says, For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that plows should plow in hope, he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. One more verse. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? All right, I'm going to preach the floor to help me in verse 3. My answer to them that do examine me is this. That's what I want to try to preach on tonight. Here's my answer. This is my answer. And uh, got to be a preacher writing this because they're the one always being examined. They're the one always... Under the microscope. Amen. Ah, how come you feel that way? You're only saying that because you're a preacher. Well, I've been a preacher most of my life. Somebody said the other day, said, if I live two more years, I'll preach half my life. Well, if I live about two more years, I'll preach two-thirds of my life already. I've been preaching long over half my life. I, be, I won't be 48 to December, and I've been preaching 30 years, so uh, that's, that's quite a bit more than half. And uh, I know, I know how it is. I know this happens. Now, uh, in 1 Corinthians here, he starts out, 
And uh, I'll preach in a minute. It's going to kind of go through this slow to start. But he says things like this. He's, he's trying to explain that he is an apostle. And uh, he said, am I not? Am I not free? Have I not seen the Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? He said, you know that you are. If I'm to know one else, an apostle, you know I am to you. You are my work. You're my seal. You know that. And he says, I know that there are those that are examining me. That's what he said. There are those that watch every move I make. And I got news for you. If you don't think you don't want people to examine your life, don't accept the call to preach. They're going to second guess everything you preach. Amen. Maybe they shouldn't send this one out on tape. I don't know. But it's the truth. I don't want to discourage any preacher to hear it, but it's the truth. They're going to second guess any decision you make. Some are. Now, some, some backs the man of God no matter what he does. But I'm talking about the bulk of the crowd. They're going to they're gonna wonder if you're right, guess if you're right. Amen. If anything goes wrong, it's always your fault. Very few times if anything goes right do you get credit for it. Sometimes. Very few times. And we're kind of under a microscope, you know. I used to, didn't like that at all. I didn't like, you know, I, I don't, I don't uh, second guess, folks. I had one of my board members tell me, uh, Brother Jerry Wayne, know who I'm talking about, Brother Bob. He said, you know, said you're the easiest pastor I ever worked with. And uh, he's been on the board there years and years before I came, and I've been there way over 18 years. He said, uh, because, he said, uh, when you give us something to do, he said, you're not breathing down our necks and not that way, this way. He said, you pretty well say do it, and you let us do it. Well, you know, I, I don't like to be second-guessed a whole lot, and I don't like to second-guess others too much. I'm just going to preach like I feel. kind of hard for me to come in and preach evangelistic unless I'm scheduled for revival or something. It can't help but that pastor part of me come out. I'm trying to hold it down, tone it down, but... Uh, <clears throat> Some of it comes out, amen. And uh, the Bible, but, but it does happen. It does happen, amen. And he felt like he was, and some of them were kind of holding him under a microscope because it looked like, if you read the rest of this chapter, uh, because of, maybe because of the way uh, that he was receiving, amen. And you know, some of them, we like quoting them scriptures, you know, Paul labored with his own hands. He did. I know they said things like this, you know, they don't work, they shouldn't eat. I know that. I believe that. I believe any man ought to be willing to labor and work and strive. I admire and respect anybody who will. Everybody ought to be willing to. Somebody help me preach tonight. Amen. But we quickly overlook scriptures like uh, uh, verse number 13 that said, Don't you know they that minister about the holy things, live with the things of the temple. They that wait at the altar, they partake of those things of the altar. Even the Lord ordained that those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. He wasn't talking about just preach what, uh, live what you preach, but he was saying live of what you preach. Amen. If you preach, live by the gospel. Amen. Yes, sir. He said, though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory in. He said, it's a necessity laid upon me, for woe is me if I preach not the gospel. If God calls you to preach, you better preach. Amen. I, I did not uh, want to, to be a preacher. I really didn't.